hey everybody welcome back to wst deep dive a series we do here on winnipeg sports talk diving into your favorite subjects when it comes to the winnipeg jets my name is Liz. i'm joined by connor as always this is our fourth episode of the show and this is a bit of an interesting one because this is the first time that we're really diving into a real nhl player our first three episodes talked a little bit more about guys who are in the prospect funnel now we're talking about the guys who are in the big leagues here so connor without further ado who are we chatting about today we are talking about Cole Perfetti. This is a guy who's been in the news a lot. You know, he's still without a contract at the time of this recording. We're recording Wednesday at 4 o'clock, so just want to make that clear if, if a contract does come up. But he's currently unsigned. He's an RFA, so there shouldn't be too much to worry about for Jets fans in terms of a contract coming to light. But he's one of the most interesting studies on the Jets, in my opinion. A 2020 10th overall pick from Whitby, Ontario. 5'11", 185 pounds. Played center in his development path, but has played winger predominantly in the NHL with the Jets. And he's 22 years old. He's born on January 1st, so he'll be turning 23 during the upcoming season for the Winnipeg Jets. And I'm super excited to kind of dive into his strengths, weaknesses. He's been a polarizing player his whole time here as a Jet. As he's been in the top six for basically the whole time as well. Last year, he was very polarizing as well. 19 goals, 19 assists, 38 points hit a wall as a player, kind of benched down the stretch by Rick Bonus, came back in the playoffs. There was a lot of conversations around Cole Perfetti last year. I'm ready to dive into all of them and look at his on-ice impact for the Winnipeg Jets. So as is typical in Winnipeg sports talk in deep dive fashion, we're going to start by talking a little bit about this player's strengths. And for someone like me, who is a big fan of everything that Cole Perfetti does on the ice, there are a lot of strengths to talk about. So we're going to kind of run through these and talk about some specific examples of all the amazing things that this player brings to the table. And the first one I want to talk about is obviously the passing. I think that if you pull Jets fans and ask scouts around the league at what Cole Perfetti's biggest strength is, it would be the passing. This is an example from a game last year against the LA Kings where that is Cole Perfetti with the puck kind of on the uh, bottom of the circle there. He just received a pass from Kyle Connor. Sean Monahan's on the back post. Josh Morrissey is driving in late. And you're going to hear me say this a lot with a lot of the media that we have in this video, but I feel like 99% of players, or maybe a little bit less than that, you can quote me on the percentage if you want, but they would shoot this puck, maybe low far pad. They would look for Monaghan back door, but Cole Perfetti just kind of sees the ice so well to the point where he feeds Josh Morrissey, who just beats the back checker there for a one-timer. As you can see, the goaltender, I'm pretty sure that's Cam Talbot in net. He was fooled. He thought Cole Perfetti would shoot that puck as he is super close to the net. Just received a pass. Didn't really look at Josh Morrissey the whole time either. Has his head up. Can see out of his peripheral vision and finds Josh Morrissey for a high danger scoring chance. That ends up in the back of the net. And Cole Perfetti routinely does this. When the Jets have a numbers advantage in the offensive zone, off the rush, off the cycle, He'll just make a pass where if you're watching on TV, the player wasn't even in frame. Or if you're watching in the building, the player just came off the bench and you didn't even know that guy was on the ice and he's making that pass. He just has such a good sense of where everyone is on the ice at all times. And I thought that that media really encapsulated that well because it's the passing, it's the vision, it's a lot of things, but you see him do it so often where he's just making these unbelievable passes. And it's truly, truly fun to watch as a player who has such a great hockey sense and just finds his teammates all the time. And what's fascinating about him is that that vision is not a limited vision, right? And, you know, when he's making those passes, he's also not afraid to shoot, which is really important. We see it sometimes everyone, if they're watching the Winnipeg Jets on a three-on-two or a two-on-one, you know the pass is coming. Perfetti is in his head making those calculated decisions. He's doing those, you know, best possible route options in his head. What is the optimal play to make here? And he's always kind of one step ahead of everything else going on. He sort of, you know, gauged the situation and decided that passing that to Josh was the best call. But this guy knows how to shoot the puck as well. And we have some media pulled up here of a time in the World Juniors. You can see from the stands, this is a bubble game where there were no fans. But Cole Perfetti is the guy right along the boards here. And the goaltender in net here is Askarov. Askarov, I always screw up the pronunciation of this name, but you can see how high this goalie is positioned. This is a very common observation when it comes to Askarov in his developmental years. He's kind of a wonky looking goalie, but he moves really well. However, positionally, you can see there's a quite a large gap between his glove side and his right pad in this situation. Cole Perfetti, obviously, this is a man advantage, so he has a little bit more space. But in a situation like this, the perfect shot to make 
is on top of the pad and underneath the glove because anything too high in this situation would be really easy for Askarov to make that save. And you can see, it's kind of hard to tell in these photos here, but this shot goes right over the pad and inside behind into the goal, which is the perfect shot to make in a situation like this. And we see this time and time again from Cole Perfetti, uh, a guy who was scoring at a pace of, you know, top six performance of the Winnipeg Jets in the limited amount of games he got this year. It's because that intelligence is not just limited to passing. It uh, plays a factor everywhere on the ice. And I, I want to further this because that LA Kings game that I brought up, Cole Perfetti was on the bench. He got benched by Rick Bonus. He hit the wall last year. He was really struggling. And then he came back into the lineup against the Kings and had a two goal, one assist night. The assist we just showed you earlier. One of the goals is something similar to this where Cole Perfetti's coming in. Uh, it's a 3-3 game and he's on the second power play unit. And from almost the same spot as you're seeing in this photo here, he just rips a shot past Cam Talbot. And everyone in the arena was just kind of like, whoa, we didn't know Cole Perfetti could do that. But it's the vision on reading goaltenders. It's the hockey sense. You know, when you hear commentators, you're watching the Jets on TSN, you hear them say, uh, oh, he has incredible hockey sense. These are the kind of things that you can quantify and look at when he's beating gold. Cole Perfetti's not a player. He's not Patrick Laine. He's not Alexander Ovechkin where he has this bomb of a shot, but he's beating goaltenders from far out. How is that possible? Well, it's because he's able to read where goaltenders are positioned, like Liss laid out so eloquently here with the glove positioned too high, and he fires it right over the pad. Um, it, it really gives him... A, a better shot than you'd think and it surprises goaltenders because he has that passing and because maybe goaltenders are leaning more towards oh josh morrissey or sean monahan on the back post uh it gives him that advantage to read the goaltenders and make the right play and it's 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 really a full package of vision both in the passing and the shooting for cole perfetti Everyone who knows me knows how much I dislike having to really focus in on non-quantifiable things when it comes to player strengths and weaknesses. But with Cole Freddy, I think it's fully worth mentioning that part of the reason that he's able to do all these things so excellently at the NHL level is because he is such a calm and cool and collected player. The word panic is not in this guy's vocabulary. He's an intelligent player, but there are lots of intelligent players in the NHL that differ between him and a lot of other guys is that he's able to bring that intelligence into those high pressure situations and fully execute on it and not panic and freeze and you know lose the practice lose the set play that he was of and bring that calmness into a lot of situations yeah and this is kind of an example we have some more media to show you here about how you know he is a smaller player we brought up earlier 5'11 185 and there's a big player here and he's kind of in a vulnerable position but he's just able to kind of chip the puck around him and and keep going and then he can go and make that play and i like how you described it that there's not an ounce of panic in his game he's unbelievably calm um i mean the the running joke is that he never smiles on the ice and i think that he's just so like down to the ground and calm in his play that he just honestly forgets to smile sometimes when he scores I was um, locked in. yes he's just locked so in. so locked in and so like poised and calm it's unbelievable um i have another example to show you here in a game against vegas where he takes a puck from vladislav to mesikov and he's at the side of the net there with the puck on a stick and i'm gonna say what i said earlier where 99 percent of players would one time this puck or they would jam it right into the pad of logan thompson but he has the <laughs> yes exactly um go for a rebound and, and bang away but he has the poise the calmness even with defenders barreling down on him, he has the time to make a play and he goes to the backhand and beats Logan Thompson on this play. Um, and, and and it's just another example of the poise. And you see it all the time with the passing as well. And I think he's gotten better over the years at holding on to the puck long enough to draw defenders to him and not taking the big hit because he's had some injury uh, issues in the past. But this past year, I think he really took a step forward into having that poise, having that calmness, and waiting until the last second, but still being able to dodge a big hit if a defender is going to crunch him in the middle of the ice. Or right here, uh, he's right in the middle of the crease on his backhand with his head down. Like, he could get crushed right here, but he knows he has enough time and he's poised enough to make that move to the backhand, where a ton of players would just jam that puck into the crease and hope for the best, right? Um, so it, it really does show a lot for Cole Perfetti and the poise that is maybe the most underrated thing about him to me is there's the shot and the vision and the passing, but the poise to make passing plays in tight spaces, 
make scoring plays in tight spaces. I think it's all under the same umbrella. And it's it's something that's super impressive once you notice it about Cole Perfetti. And this is usually the part of WSD Deep Dive where we shift from strengths to weaknesses. Um, but we also want to talk about a few of the stereotypes surrounding Cole Perfetti, who's often listed as a small weak player who loses uh, battles on the boards and things of that nature list. I'll let you get the first crack at this one. Cool Perfetti, small, weak player. What do you have to say about that? We're, we're not doing this, right? And you're, we're bringing this up because this is a narrative that exists among Jets fans and in Jets community spaces. But, you know, when it comes to player weaknesses, I think it's so important that we look at situations as there are means and there are ends, right? Where, you know, the outcome is what matters. And when it comes to a player being small, to me, I have no issue with that whatsoever if it doesn't impact or have a negative result when it comes to the outcomes. I was kind of giving an explanation of this to someone earlier where I was explaining that, you know, if a player was playing a game, for example, with a broken stick, the stick had no blade. The problem is not that the stick doesn't have a blade. The problem is that the player cannot pass. The problem is that the player cannot shoot. When it comes to a player like Cole Perfetti, the problem is not that he's small. It would be that he's bad on the boards. But that's not true. It would be that he can't play against tough matchups, but that's not true. So I have no issue with Cole Perfetti being a small player because it's not impacting his game in the way that people tend to think it is. If you look at any of the metrics surrounding you know, his play in front of the net, this player is effectively able to possess pucks when it comes to net front situations where people think smaller players are weaker. If you watch every single board battle this guy has been a part of, he is stronger on the boards than most of the other Winnipeg Jets forwards, especially players who play a similar role to him, such as Kyle Connor and Nikolai Ehlers. He is getting the puck away from that board battle more often than those other players will. So I do believe that this is an imperfect player, but not because he's small. My issue with him comes down to his skating. And again, it's not the skating that's the problem. It's the impact that the fact that he has a little bit of a slower skating style, how that affects his shooting, his passing, his zone entries, and all those things. That's where the problems and weaknesses lie in this player for me. Yeah, I agree. And just to add an, an example of the skating, which I also think is... is Again, it's hard to say it's his biggest weakness. Like, that's a really strong term. Um, but Cole Perfetti is aware of it. He knows he can get stronger and faster. Um, but he might miss out on rush chances playing with a Nikolai Ehlers because Ehlers is flying up the ice and Cole Perfetti is getting tracked down. Uh, so a two-on-one goes to a two-on-two and he misses out on that offensive opportunity, right? Um, something along those lines. But just quickly on the on the board battle, I want to bring it back to the poise conversation because I think that really helps him in those situations. Uh, again, a lot of smaller players who have been, you know, small their whole life throughout their development path would be told by coaches to just go on the boards and just jam the puck and just get it away from wherever you are and just maybe even kill it on the boards. But he almost has this poise to be able to dig pucks out and not panic along the wall. Um, and then we showed you that example earlier of him chipping the puck around a player. Uh, that's another example of him, you know, not necessarily winning a board battle. Like he's not going into the corner and hitting a 6'4 defenseman and putting him on his back. But he's able to lift sticks. He's able to get in passing lanes. And that has a, has a similar, if not better, impact than going and hitting a player in the corner. Um, so I 100% I agree with you that uh, on the, the board battles and the small, weak stereotype that surrounds Cole Perfetti, I also don't think that this is a perfect player. I think the skating needs work, and I think he does miss out on scoring chances because of that. Um, and, and I'm sure... I'm not sure. I know he's aware of it and is working to get stronger and better at it for the future. Yeah. And like when it comes to kind of the offensive ability, it's you can look at it in a couple of different ways and kind of the main buckets I would put it into is, you know, say we are getting maybe 80% effectiveness from this player because, you know, if he were faster, we would get X amount more out of him. That can look like in a situation, he's maybe a step behind, so he's not able to shoot the puck as hard or pass the puck in the exact perfect way that he wanted to because he showed up to the situation a little bit late. That could be, you know, you're not getting the full effectiveness in the situations he does find himself in. But the other one is kind of the gap that you're missing out on. And it's hard to evaluate things that don't happen, which is why people always talk about defensemen being hard to evaluate. It's a similar thing with a guy like this, who part of the reason that this is a gap is because 
he's probably missing out on X number of plays that he could have been a part of or could have set up had he been able to be in that play a little bit quicker. So it's it's kind of hard to to quantify that and to come up with specific examples of that. But, you know, anyone who has watched this player play, as I know most Jets fans have watched extensively over the last couple of seasons, you can see that there maybe are some missed opportunities that would kind of alleviate if, you know, the foot speed were to improve a little bit, which we know is something that, you know, will continue to, um, he will continue to work on. We see it with a lot of younger NHL players who, as they transition into the big leagues, that is a gap. A lot of them close that gap. So we're very optimistic yeah. with Cole Perfetti and kind of how he looks over the course of the next couple seasons with the Winnipeg Jets. Yeah, and I do just want to quickly bring up his his J Fresh Hockey uh, microstat card with all three zones as well, where you see the 18% percentile rush shot assist number. And I think that that right there kind of, it, again, it's hard to quantify things like this. Uh, so analytics are, are a great help. Um, but the 18th percentile rush shot assist, like we just talked about his vision and poise and all these things, but he's not one of the best rush shot assist players in the league when he should be if if his skating was up to par. Um, so I think that that is, is a big example and maybe why that even strength offensive war is at 9% when it should be a little bit higher. And as Jets fans, we know that it's really a little bit higher because of the impact, but he misses out on so much of the transition chances that are really taking over the NHL. A lot of teams are becoming more rush dependent um, and, and Cole Perfetti maybe misses out on those opportunities a little bit, uh, as is represented by that number. But um, I just wanted to bring up that card. I don't know if, Liz, there's anything on that card that you wanted to specify um, as we as we move on here. Yeah, I mean, I think it encapsulates, you know, a good portion of what we're talking about and kind of the TLDR of this whole video is that this player has so many things in his toolbox, but he's just not able to use all of them to their 100% capacity um, because of the foot speed issue. So it kind of plays into a lot of different scenarios. This is why a player like this is so excellent on something like the power play, given the opportunity, because that has a little bit more structure and a little bit less, um, you know, high speed mobility and, and quickness. It's a little bit more structured and set up. So this is a player that will continue to improve in these areas and continue to play more meaningful minutes, more power play minutes, um, and play against tough competition. You can see the defensive numbers here are strong as well. So uh, it's it's definitely the type of player that, you know, like any 20-something young guy who was drafted in the last couple of years, like you're just kind of wanting to sit back and watch and see because there's a lot left to learn about a player like this, but a lot of really strong fundamentals that will continue to improve and make him an effective NHLer. So like I said, at the top of the show, it's Wednesday afternoon when we're recording this. Cole Perfetti has yet to sign a contract, but Liz, I want to zoom out for a second from kind of the, the micro analyzing of Cole Perfetti's on ice performances and things to watch for and things like that. And I wanted to ask you about the contract. What do you think the benefits are to a short-term and a long-term extension, either from Perfetti's point of view or the Winnipeg Jets' point of view? Yeah, I think, you know, we can look at this specifically from the Jets' point of view sort of here first, and you can kind of fill in the gaps when it comes to how Cole is probably feeling about this type of thing. For, for the Jets, the benefits to the long-term deal are that I simply think this player is only going to become more valuable league-wide as he continues to grow and play a more impactful role. If you lock him up now, you're not looking at an $8 million contract, but if you know you bridge him and you need to sign him long-term in two years from now, that could be the kind of camp that he falls into just knowing the type of impact this player could have. I am the last person to talk about draft positioning once a player leaves the draft, but I do think it is worth noting, especially with younger players, he was only drafted a few years ago, that 2020 draft was stacked. This player kind of fell down to the draft. He was supposed to be like a top 5, 10 draft pick, right? Like this is a player who has showed promise at every level he has ever played in and has continued to grow as he has you know, moved into the AHL. He grew in the AHL. We're watching him grow in the NHL as we speak. He is going to get better. This is a, you know, a, while I'm more than happy to hang my hat on, like this is something that I feel very strongly in with everything that we've seen trend-wise from this player. So for the Jets side, locking him up long-term could be a very cap-efficient play on their side when it comes to maybe wanting to look at a contender-type window in the next few years. Not sure what the exact plans are for the team there, but it's definitely a player you'd like to lock up if that's the situation you're looking at. However, on the short term, there's always the same benefit when it comes to these bridge deals that you get a little bit more time for this asset to prove itself and get to know it's worth a little bit more accurately. 
And it also opens the opportunity to extend, you know, his RFA window. Um, we still have a few years left of that. If they were to bridge him, then they could sign him. And if, you know, they sign a bridge and then a full-time extension, you're looking at 10 more years of Cole Perfetti as opposed to right now, if you were to sign him to seven, eight-year deal, whatever, you could be walking him into unrestricted free agency, um, you know, right after that. So there's a little bit of give and take on both sides. Cole Perfetti, kind of similar situation where, you know, a short-term deal gives you more time to prove yourself if you think you're going to be worth more money in the long run. But a long-term deal also gives you that stability. And, you know, by everything we've seen from this media tour so far in Vegas and the comments he's made about the contracts, it's something this player does want to be here with this club. So that could be something that he's eager to look towards. I don't know, Connor, what are you What are you thinking? What do you think we're going to see when it comes to this deal? Is this going to be a short or a long-term situation here? Uh, that's, that's such a tough, like... Mike was on Winnipeg Sports Talk with Huss the other day, and he brought up the scenario in which maybe there's already kind of a, a the logistics to a short-term deal worked out already. Something in the two years, four million, three and a half million range. And the sides are both open to a long-term extension, so they're still talking. I might subscribe to that thinking a little bit. Like all of us at the start of you know these Cole Perfetti contract negotiations kind of just said, yeah, bridge deal, two years, four million. But the longer this plays out, I feel like both sides might be talking long-term extension. And personally, I think the Jets should do everything in their power to get Cole Perfetti signed long-term. A lot of the things that we brought up in this video are are repeatable and, and real qualities that will have uh, give him the success of an NHL career way down the line. And I think getting him for seven years at maybe six million, six and a half million, whatever the number may be, would be huge for the Winnipeg Jets. So... Um, I, I, I'm not sure I, I holding out hope personally for a long-term extension. Cause I think that's the right play from the Jets perspective, but I could totally see a short-term extension as well. Uh, you really can't go wrong with a player like Cole Perfetti. Yeah, he's versatile and he will be a Winnipeg Jet for a long time. If he continues on this trajectory that he's on right now because of his flexibility in the lineup. And so it's going to be very interesting to watch as the next couple of years play out and see you know, if he finds some chemistry with particular players like, you know, a Kyle Connor or a Colby Barlow, maybe he becomes their right hand man or John Carlson. Who knows? I'm very excited to see what happens. Yeah, me as well. Um, that's going to do it for this edition of WST Deep Dive. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like, the subscribe, and the notification bell so you don't miss our awesome WST Deep Dive series. Uh, about two times a month, we'll try and bring this content to you. It's very fun to do. I have a blast doing it. The Cole Perfetti Deep Dive. As always, drop a comment below. We are open to hearing his strengths that you think that we didn't touch on, maybe his weaknesses that we didn't touch on, uh, enabling smarter hockey conversations, as Liz said in the very first episode. We're always about that. So drop a comment down below, hit the subscribe, the notification bell, and we will catch you on the next episode of WST Deep Dive. See ya.